those who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength, and they shall rise up with wings as eagles. They shall. Welcome to Rayba Melbourne Online Church. Hello to everyone from Melbourne, Australia and around the world. It's Maureen with you this morning. Let me pray and commit our service to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this new day and we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the word that's going to come forward this morning and we just ask that every heart would be touched. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Billy Broom meetings. Exciting news. We have Dr. Billy Broom coming to Rayma Family Church. We will be hosting her on Saturday the 17th of June and both services on Sunday the 18th of June. All our services will be at Beaumont, 934 Doncaster Road, Doncaster. If you are in Melbourne, come and join us, but please register on our web website. We have a prayer meeting for Billy Broom meetings on Melbourne, uh, sorry, on the 14th of June at seven o'clock till eight o'clock. If you are in Melbourne, please join us for this prayer meeting. It will be upstairs in, in the prayer room at Doncaster. All our online programs can be watched on YouTube and Facebook, Rayma Family Church. What's online this week? Eagles Prayer, Thursday evening, 7.30 p.m. Sunday service, 10 a.m. But if you live in Melbourne, please join us. Our service is in Doncaster. Uh, 10 a.m. or Mill Park at 5 p.m. You can go to raymafamilychurch.org.au for all the details. Please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you need help or prayer support, contact the church. Contact details should be below on your screen right now. Contact details are on our website, raymafamilychurch.org.au or you can message Rayma on 050 006 we appreciate all your continued support for Rayma Ministry. So have an awesome day and have a blessed week and I'll see you again sometime soon. Bye now. Good morning, everyone. We're just going to receive our tithes and offerings now. Uh, just a quick thought and a verse just I want to share with you this morning. The kingdoms of this world is completely contrary to the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus came... And he preached about, and his message was on the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is now, it's at hand, it's here. And Jesus, throughout his teachings in the scripture, told us what the kingdom of God is like, just through his teachings. And I won't go into all of that right now, but just as you look, you know, it's completely countercultural to how the world operates and what the world is. You know, he says, if you want to, if you want to save your life, you will lose it, but if you lose your life for the kingdom's sake, you'll actually find true life. If you give up your life for the kingdom, you'll actually find true life. And one of the ways, particularly in, in giving and in tithing and offerings, you know, in, in this countercultural way of thinking, is in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. You know, it's this God's way of thinking. And it says in Proverbs eleven twenty four, 24, the one that scatters increases all the more but one the one who withholds more than is right will lend it tends to poverty did you catch that the one who scatters the one who uh, gives the one who liberally sows will increase even more but the one who withholds more than is what is due lends to poverty that's how the kingdom of god works the kingdom of the world says hold on to as much as you can get all you can can all you get and then sit on your can but the kingdom of god says scatter your seed and in scattering you'll actually increase as a principle and operation of the kingdom of god so there's the giving details um on your screen right now that you can give towards rayma family church if you have your tithes if you're a regular viewer you, and you give your tithes to us your tithes you can give your tithe through that or an offering you can go on our website raymafamilychurch.org.au and there's uh you can just click on the bar at the top that says giving but we just really appreciate and thank and are very thankful for your support uh, for this church and, and the ministry. 
And um, we just pray that God will bless you and increase you and that you just have an awesome morning with us at church. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Rhema Melbourne Online Church. Great to have you with us again this morning as I continue uh, teaching about the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. So uh, let's pray. Let's commit it to the Lord. And um, God is good. Amen. Father God, we just worship you. We love you. We adore you. Oh, you are so awesome. We praise you. We lift you up. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how we've received power. So, Father God, we commit this morning to you and this teaching on the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. So... We yield to you, we commit it to you as you lead us and guide us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so this is part number five of the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. I really encourage you to go back and have a listen to some of the other teaching. We've covered some exciting things about the Holy Spirit. So we're going to continue this morning about uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. And we said that there is, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit is twofold. There's a dual working of the Holy Spirit uh, within and upon. So there's a dual working of the Holy Spirit uh, in, in, in believers, and that is a work within, and then there's that work upon. And we said that that work within, of course, is the indwelling presence. That's the key. We must remember that salvation, when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, we receive that indwelling presence. And let's and and one of the emphases that I I made with us was that we should be conscious, ever aware uh, of that indwelling presence. So you remember that. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation. And salvation is for everyone, everyone who believes and receives Christ. When you receive Christ, you receive that indwelling presence. And then there's another work of the Holy Spirit, and that is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And that work of the Holy Spirit is where we are baptized in the Holy Spirit and we receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So remember that too. Salvation is the indwelling presence. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And he comes upon us and upon us. So we had a look last week at the difference. There's a different working. And it's important that we understand this because I think it's great that um, when you communicate with other people and talk with other people, some people have a lack of understanding about the work of the Holy Spirit uh, in believers, and they get confused and get mixed up. They th- some people believe that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive all of the Holy Spirit. Uh, some people say that you're not saved unless you speak in tongues and speak in the Holy Spirit. But there is a definite dual working of the Holy Spirit in salvation. So you can explain this to people. You can help people. This may help you. Amen. And so the Bible is very clear about that. And one of those working is the uh, new birth, that you are in salvation. You are born again. Uh, you become a new creation in Christ, and we've spent time looking at uh, looking at that—a new species of being that never existed before. And you become, with that indwelling presence, you become a well. There's a well within you, and that well is an oasis. The world out there is just like a desert, and and there are dry places out there. The world is dry. The world is thirsty and the world cannot quench its thirst 
But Jesus came to give the world living water and that indwelling presence is for the world. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for believers. You must be, you must receive the indwelling presence first before you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so that well is an oasis. And so even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. And no matter what circumstance or difficulty that we may be experiencing in our life, we can draw upon that living water, that well, it's a living water springing up into everlasting life. And that's what salvation is. It's everlasting life. So it will spring up and it will quench our thirst. You may be facing a difficult situation in your life today, but you have that oasis. An oasis is, is all the resources that you need in a, dress, in, in, in a, in a dry place, in a, in a desert. Amen. So you carry that oasis wherever you go. You carry it in your work. You carry it into business. You carry it with you into your shopping centre. Uh, when you're buying your groceries, you know, no matter what you're buying, that, that, that oasis is always there. Even if you are confronted with a suddenly in your life, you may have had a suddenly this week, well, you can drink from that oasis that will spring up within you and it will quench your thirst. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the other one in John chapter 7, that is the other experience and that is a river. And the river is the infilling. And there's a big difference between a river and a well. We said that the well is for you. And that well, with that indwelling presence, it's... Uh, for the uh, operation of the fruit of the Spirit. And there's nine fruits. The number one fruit is love. God is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. But it manifests like nine ways. There is love. There is peace. There is joy. And all those things that we covered last night, uh, last, last Sunday. But that indwelling presence uh, is for the to produce fruit in our human spirit that's been regenerating and born again. But the river is not just for you. It's not for you. It's for service. It's for other people. It comes upon you. There is a power that comes upon you to witness, to witness that our life is a witness. We can share our witness that how good God is and their need for, for Christ in their lives. Amen. And their need for the, that power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so that, that gives us power. You will receive power. Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And so uh, that well is for you, and that is inward. It will produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in John 7, where it talks about a river, uh, that river is for the infilling, and that comes upon, upon you. There's the indwelling presence within and the power upon within us gives us authority i'm going over this a bit but it's important that we understand this moving forward as we move into the 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 baptism of the holy spirit and the gifts of the holy spirit so that infilling it comes upon us and it's an endless supply it's for others it's for service it's the gateway into the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the gateway into the supernatural. Amen. It's the gateway into the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You cannot operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit without being baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit. The indwelling presence, you receive Christ with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Now, another thing I want to share with you this morning in that difference between salvation uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation, that indwelling presence, being born again and being a new creation. And then that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when he comes upon us for power and for service, the different work and uh, of, of an operation of the Holy Spirit in, uh, with that. We had a look at that, Acts 8, that when you receive Christ, you receive the indwelling presence. That when you receive uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, he will come upon you. A separate work. Go back and have a look at that that we taught last week in Acts chapter 8. And now this week, let's go to Luke chapter 10 as we look at the oil and the wine. And in Luke chapter 10 uh, and in verse 25 it now it begins to talk about the parable of the good samaritan and now in verse 25 and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him jesus tempted jesus saying master what shall i do to inherit e eternal life so he's asking jesus two questions in this parable the very first question is what must I do to receive eternal life? What is eternal life? The indwelling presence. You receive Christ. Amen. And so Jesus said to him, uh, what is written in the law? H how do you read that yourself? And so he answered and he said, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And that is Romans 10, 9 and 10. And he said to him, you have answered well, this do and you shall live everlasting life. So that really answering the question, eternal life, it's how do you receive eternal life? Romans 10, 9 and 10, you can Confess with your mouth and you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, and you receive Christ. You love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Amen. And then there's that indwelling presence. Uh, then in verse 29, let's read on. The second question that he asked Jesus. Uh, so the first, let, let me answer that first question again to make sure you're crystal clear. And behold, a certain lawyer stood and tempted him saying, Master, what must I do to eternal life? And, uh, and he answered and said, you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. In other words, uh, you must believe, you must love Christ and believe and receive him as your Lord and Saviour. And then secondly, in verse 29, <clears throat> and then this certain lawyer, uh, he was willing to justify himself and he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbour? So now Jesus is going to answer the second question, who is my neighbour? So let's read this and find out. Remember, we're looking at the dual working of the Holy Spirit. And even here, we're finding out and learning about the different dual working of the Holy Spirit. One is salvation, eternal life, where we receive the indwelling presence. And the other one is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is going to uh, begin to share some things here about oil and wine. And so in verse 30, Jesus answering and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves. Now, first of all, who's the thief? John 10.10, 10, Satan is the thief. The Bible tells us that the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what the thief does. But Jesus 
continued in John 10, 10. And he said, he said, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. Satan is the thief. So the thief, he stripped him, this certain man, he stripped him of his raiment, wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, let me explain. The thief is Satan. He stripped him of his raiment. That's the curse. The curse is threefold. Poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Stripped him of his raiment. There's poverty. Wounded him. Uh, sickness and disease. And departed, leaving him half dead. And so that half dead. So we know now that uh, the thief is Satan. <clears throat> and that who is the good Samaritan? That's the question we're asking. And this, sir, this man, um, he was left. The thief comes, Satan, stripped him of his raiment, poverty, wounded him, sickness and disease, and leaving him half dead. And that's what Satan done as the thief. In Genesis 2, chapter 17, but of the tree of life, Jesus said this to uh, Abraham and Sarah in that garden. Uh, to Abraham in that garden. He said, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Sorry, Adam and Eve. <laughs> I said Sarah. Not Sarah, but Eve. Adam and Eve. Right in the beginning. Right, Genesis chapter 2. Right in the beginning. And Jesus said to Adam and Eve, but if the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will not eat of it. For in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. Remember, Satan stripped him of his raiment, wounded him and left him half dead. And this is answering the question of the half dead. The half dead is that they did um, uh, eat of that fruit of knowledge and of good of evil. And the Lord said, in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now the Greek, sorry, the Hebrew emphasis uh, in that surely die, they put surely die because really it is written die, die, surely die, die, die. And it doesn't make sense, does it? But surely has that second emphasis there, double emphasis, dying present tense, Spiritually, you will die future tense physically. That's what happened with Adam in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden. Once he partook of that fruit and ate of that, Adam and Eve, once they ate of that tree of knowledge and of good of evil, they died spiritually. There and then. First, there was spiritual death. Then many, many years later, there was physical death. On the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ, he died spiritually first. And then uh, he died spiritually first. Then after that, on the cross, there was a physical death. So Adam was left half dead. And now let's read on. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, the Levite, when he was uh, at the place, he came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. So now we've got the priest and the Levite. So who do they represent? The priest and the Levite, of course, represent the law. And the law, they passed by on the other side because the law could not save. Remember, man was under a threefold curse of poverty, uh, of poverty, sickness and disease, sickness and um, spiritual death. And only God could redeem and save humanity from spiritual death. And so the law, uh, the priest and the Levite were the law. The law could never say. The law was a signpost to say, hey, this is a signpost. Man 
kind, you cannot save yourself. You need a redeemer. There's a redeemer coming who will redeem and save you. Hallelujah. And his name will be, of course, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. So uh, they passed on the other side. They looked on him and passed by the other side. But a certain Samaritan. So this now, of course, is Jesus answering that question, who is my neighbor? And his neighbor is the Samaritan, the good Samaritan. And the neighbor, the good Samaritan is Jesus. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Hallelujah. So uh, the law was just there as a signpost. But Jesus came here on a specific journey to redeem us from the threefold curse. Hallelujah. And to, for the remission of sin and to uh, restore us back into right relationship and fellowship with our Father because of that fall of Adam that was left half dead. And so that certain Samaritan, Jesus, he came and had compassion on him. Verse 34, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. And oil is a type of salvation and wine is a type of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, glory be to God. We need the oil of salvation, the indwelling presence, but we need the wine of the baptism with the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when we are filled, Filled with the Holy Spirit, there is a manifestation and a work of the Holy Spirit where we can speak in a heavenly language and all the benefits of that will cover another time. Hallelujah. And he set him down on his beast and brought him to the inn to take care of him. So the inn is the church, the body of Christ. When we were saved, we were baptized into the body of Christ. So the inn is the body of Christ where there is a shepherd. He's the great shepherd, but under him there is an under shepherd. I am a pastor called and anointed of God to be a pastor, called to be a pastor. I am an under shepherd to the great shepherd. And so the church, that in is the church. And there is the universal church, the church worldwide, the body of Christ. And then there is the local church. And that's why it's so, so, so important. It's God's will that we are connected into a local church so that we can uh, be taken care of, to take care of him. Uh, he brought him to an end to take care of him. A shepherd, uh, a bishop takes care of your soul. That's what Pastor Eileen and I do at Rhema. We shepherd you and feed you the word of God. And it's important if you live in Melbourne that you get connected into our church. Uh, Rhema, uh, Doncaster, 10 a.m. every Sunday or uh, at Mill Park at 5 p.m. But the thing is, it's important to be connected. We have our church family online as well. You tithe and bring your offerings and stay connected with us here online. That's important that you stay connected and get fed and be and and have that shepherd. I'm shepherding you as I feed you the word of God today. Amen. So he poured in our oil and wine, put him on his own beast and brought him to the inn, the body of Christ, the local church to take care of him, to have a shepherd. And then on the next day, he departed and took two pence and gave it to the host, the host of the inn. The host is the Holy Spirit, of course. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. 
And if you've been following me in this teaching, you will understand now all about the importance of the comforter and the work of the comforter within us. The host is the comforter to take care of him. So you've got the pastor, the shepherd to help you, but also you've got the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, amen, and the power to come upon you. Uh, and then Jesus, he said to host, and he said to him, take care of him, and whatever you spend more, when I come, I will repay. When I come, I will repay. Hallelujah. So Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back again. When I come, I will re I, when I come, I will repay. When's Jesus coming back? At the rapture of the church for us. He's coming back for the church where the Lord meets us in the air and we receive a new glorified body and we are uh, we are raised up, hallelujah, resurrected from uh, our bodies are resurrected. And, and of the rapture of the church, if we're in heaven, we come down with the Lord. Those that have gone before, but if we're still alive and remain on the earth, we meet the Lord in the air. And he comes, Jesus, with a shout, invades enemy territory and takes us out of this place. And we receive a new glorified body. Glory be to God. And then in verse 36, and now of these, now which of these three things do you think is the neighbor uh, unto him that fell amongst thieves? And he said to him, the, the neighbor is the one who showed mercy on him. Hallelujah, the good Samaritan. And he said to him, and he said to, to him, now you go. And you do likewise. And that's what we do as the body of Christ. Oh, glory be to God. We have the indwelling presence uh, of God. We love it, the Lord God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. But not only that, we have that uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit of the power to take that love to the world. Amen. We put peace on our feet and we take peace into the world with the power of the Holy Spirit that is a witness to the world and we can even pray and intercede for the world with the heavenly language that's not just uh, praying through our soul and our natural mind but we can through the baptism of the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit the infilling of the Holy Spirit now we have a he heavenly language that we can bypass our thoughts and we can pray glory be to God we can pray in the spirit we can pray with this heavenly language and we can pray the perfect will of God Praying in tongues. I want to encourage you. Spend some time this week praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. Do that this week. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so Jesus is the good Samaritan. Hallelujah. Pouring in oil and wine. Oil and wine always symbolize, symbolize the work of of the Holy Spirit in salvation, the indwelling, and also the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Oil is a type of salvation and wine is always the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Um, oil and wine were poured out on the day of Pentecost. You know, on the day of Pentecost, there was not just the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the oil as well was poured out for people to receive Christ as their Lord and Saviour. Oh, glory be to God. So what a day the day of Pentecost was. Um, all that time, 2,000 years ago, that's where there was an outpouring. But that outpouring was 2,000 years ago on that day of Pentecost, the oil and the wine the indwelling and the infilling for all of humanity uh, to receive. Those 
who believe, whosoever will believe and receive Christ will receive everlasting life. And those who receive the Holy Spirit receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and can be a witness in this world with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oil and wine. Praise God forevermore. And so what I want us to do now is go to, um, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. And let's, let's, let's have a look at the oil and the wine. Matthew chapter 9. This is so exciting. How wonderful this is. And then it reads in verse 16. No man puts a piece of new cloth on an old piece of garment, on an old garment. For that which is put in, if you put a piece of new cloth on that old hole to fill it up, it will remove from that garment, it will tear and it will make it worse. So you cannot put something new, a new piece of garment on an old piece that's already torn because it's weak, isn't it? And it's not designed. It will make it worse. It will tear and make it worse. Now in verse 17. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. Now these bottles are back here. Remember this is not a, a bottle, a glass bottle. But these are leather bottles. Leather. And, and really they are wine or wine skins. Wine skins. And they would put um, refreshments uh, in, in these wineskins. So neither do men put new wine into old bottles. If not, the bottle will break. So in other words, um, you must be saved, first of all. We, we can look at this later on, but first of all, salvation is for the world. Baptism, the Holy Spirit is not for the world. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is for believers. First, you must receive the oil before you receive the wine. So you must receive the oil. You just cannot be baptized or you, will, you wouldn't be able to handle the power of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And that's why he's talking about you cannot pour new wine into old wineskins. So first of all, you must be born again and have the indwelling presence. And then the Lord can pour in the wine and you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And through that infilling, glory be to God, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then there is a manifestation of, of, of a heavenly language called tongues that will flow out, that will bypass any natural thought and you will enter into the supernatural prayer, praying in the Spirit. Amen. So neither do men put new wine into old bottles or the bottles will break and the wine will run out. And the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles. So you have to become a new creation. Be born again and become a new creation. Then you are ready. If you are out there and you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior and you are a new creation, you've received eternal life. You don't have to wait any longer. For the wine, you can receive the wine now. You can receive it today. Hallelujah. And so, uh, uh, so neither do men, in verse 17, put new wine into old bottles or the bottles break. And the wine runs out and the bottles perish. But they put new wine in new bottles and both are preserved. So salvation is always for the world. Baptism for the Holy, of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit is for believers. And if you haven't received that, you can receive that today. 
and you know, I, I love the story about this too. You know, a wineskin going back in these uh, times of Jesus, um, uh, a wineskin, if the wine was not in that skin, if there was nothing in there, it would get very dry and parched and it would just dry out. And what they would do, they would take oil and they would get the oil and they would rub it in. They would rub that oil into that wineskin, rub it in, and it would become moist again. And, and uh, it would become moist and pliable. And, and so moist and pliable, it was ready again to be filled with the wine. And that's where what we were. We were dead and lost in our trespasses and sins. Oh, but Christ, he paid the penalty of sin and he took sin. He removed the sin, remission of sins from our lives. Hallelujah. And when we received him, uh, we received Christ and we, re we were regenerated and born again. We received the oil of the Holy Spirit where we were dead and lost in our, in our trespasses and sins. And we were just dried out and parched and dead. That we received Christ and the oil of salvation. Hallelujah. And we became a new creation. We became born again and ready for the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. And you know, I cannot finish today without reaching out to you that if you're not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you first need to be saved. You need Christ first. Salvation is for the world. So first of all, ask the Lord to be your your, your Christ and your Saviour. Just say, Jesus, I ask you now, you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, then I am saved. So I believe and I receive you now, Christ, as my Lord and as my Saviour. And now if you've done that or you've done that in the past and you're saved, but you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, how exciting is this right now? Glory be to God. You know, Jesus baptized you. Uh, the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ. Remember I told you that? The, uh, the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ, into Christ's body. But now it's Christ who is present. He is here right now. And he's the one who baptizes into the believers in the Holy Spirit. So all you've got to do is ask. No different than salvation. As you ask for him to be your Lord and Saviour, you ask now as a believer to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So as we do that, I just pray for you now. Just say, Lord Jesus, I ask for the baptism and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And when I ask, I receive. You said that in your word, ask and you'll receive that your joy shall be full. And your joy shall be full right now as you receive that baptism. Now what's important, you must speak. The Holy Spirit will speak through you in a new heavenly language, but you must speak. You've received that baptism. You've asked, you've got it. Now let's begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Urabakasumma. You speak, come on, let it out. Come on, there. Come on, you speak it. Let it out. Oh, it may not sound like me. It may not sound like other people, but it's there. And you need to do that. And you need to practice that. Let's close this morning just praying in the Holy Spirit. And you who's just received that, you receive that as well. Pastor Riley is with me. Let's pray. 
pray in the Holy Ghost. Urabakasuma. Eleke shide beke shile. Uroboku shubadanta. Ureke shide beke shide. Urabakasuma. Ureke shide bediende. We glorify you, Lord. Urabahasu bereke shide. Eleke shide berapa rutuko marata. E malaha suba, o reke shi maladu brata, o reke shi de, o rata. I pray over our partners, Father God. I pray over our partners that partner with us online, our online family and partners. I pray for increase in your life. I pray for the power of the Holy Spirit operating and manifesting in your life. I pray for the Holy Spirit to continue to lead you and guide you and strengthen you and help you and stand by with yes. you and intercede over you. We pray for that right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So glory be to God. Thanks for joining with us today. Wasn't that good? Wasn't that a great time together? Uh, thank you for joining with us. Look forward to seeing you again next week. And remember that Jesus is Lord. And those who wait on the Lord They shall renew Shall run.